San Antonio. So I've seen uh, some of you guys before, and some of you guys are new faces, but uh, it's good to see all of you. Uh, what we're going to talk about today are what I consider to be the two most important shots in the game, which are the serve and the return of serve. Okay. So I don't know how many of you guys watched the matches earlier today um, with Alan Garner and Charlie Shanks and Nadia Alvarado and Aaron Garner, um, but the two guys with the best serves had a huge advantage, and you saw Nadia able to sort of take over the match just like Charlie did. So today, everyone's going to leave the court serving like Charlie Shanks and Nadia Alvarado. Okay, I'm going to teach you the secrets to that. Okay, so uh, the first thing you want to remember on the serve is that the objective of hitting the serve is either to hit an ace or a shot or a serve that they can't return or get yourself an easy setup. So I see a lot of people, you know, just serving, either throwing the ball in and they're immediately put on defense because they've given their opponent an offensive opportunity, either shot off the back wall or something that comes off the side wall where your opponent's able to drive the ball and then you find that the server is actually just trying to scoop the ball up like this. Your goal on the serve is to be able to step into that first shot. That's called the first strike. Okay, so instead of having your opponent blast the ball at you like this or having to dive in to try and pick up their return of serve, you should be in a position where you're set up like this with your strong hand to drive the ball. Okay, so that means you have to figure out what the strengths and weaknesses are of your opponent. So if your opponent's got a really strong game up here, you might want to try and keep the serve down lower. And if your opponent's got a really good fist, um, is able to hit the ball up to the ceiling or wrap the ball around, maybe you try and hit a serve that puts them up a little bit higher. So what I'm going to have uh, Chip show us first is the power serve. Okay, the power serve, ideally, you want to land just past the short line no deeper than the restraining line and you want it to bounce twice before it comes off the back wall because that means your opponent can't take the shot off the back wall and they're going to be forced to hit a shot that's low down below their knee and from the deep court. So Chip, tell us a little bit about what you're thinking about on the serve and maybe we'll have everybody come over here against this right side wall since Chip is right handed and just take a look at what he's doing. It's okay, it doesn't matter. So, Chip, um, we're gonna just, we're gonna get a different ball in here for Chip. So Chip, Chip's got one of the best serves in the game. So Chip, talk to us a little bit about what you're thinking about going into your serve. Where are you gonna stand? When I come into the box, majority of the time, I favor the right because when I go back to the left, I like to give it a natural that hooks into the wall so it forces them into the wall. And if they, if they try to play it off the wall, hopefully it kind of hops and hits that crack and dies. And then when I go this way, I still like to be same distance also down the right because I like to straighten it out or come over it and it cracks out. So Chip, before you get into where you're actually going to hit the serve, talk a little bit about what you mean by a natural and coming over the ball. What, is, is that something you're doing with your hand? Yeah, natural is just, just driving through it and kind of just flipping the wrist underneath the ball to give it a good spin. And then a reverse is the top spin coming over it. So which I, I use my fingers to do that. Some people use here. I just feel comfortable in the, these little grooves to give it a lot more spin than others, I guess. So, uh, but the first thing I'm thinking, the first thing I guess I'm thinking when I come in is I decide where I'm going to go right off the bat. So if I decide I'm going down the right, the first thing I do is I look at and find an area on the wall, and I want to find a spot. Usually it's about a foot to two feet, foot and a half, off away from the right wall right there. And I kind of just think of like pull. I'm trying to push the ball back into the back corner, like hit a bank shot off that wall. So then I, I find my spot and I look away and I never look at it again until I strike the ball. I kind of try to use the muscle memory of where I'm going to go. So and then same thing when I go to the left, I find my spot. I usually go about six inches off my rear and then I find that spot. Because if you go too far over and you hit it off that wall, usually you're in trouble. You give your opponent, a, if they have a good left, they're going to drive it down the left or kill shot and you're stuck. You know? So I kind of just go right off my rear. And like I said, I hop it that way, or I straighten it out. They kind of see it, and they think, oh, it's, it's going to come right to them. And then that hop where it straightens it out, it just throws them off sometimes. So it's like, 
they're thinking, you know, oh, that's high, it's going to wrap around, so they get ready for the ball to come around, but then it straightens out, and they're like, oh, no, now they got to chase it. So, like I said, so that's the first thing I think about is where I'm going to go, I decide it as I'm coming into the box. You know, I, if I get an ace on the right, there's no need to change it. Go after it, keep going. If something's working, don't change it. That's what I see a lot these days that with the younger group coming up is they change their serve. They get an ace, they do one good serve, and then next thing you know, they do a wraparound serve or something down over here, and then they get paid for doing it. It's like, stick with what works, you know? Why change? So uh, if I come down, going down the rest, I just find my area right off my rear, probably somewhere around right there. I'd like to take it straight back towards Omar. Now, everybody notice how low Chip that hit that serve. I've, I've seen a lot of you guys play this weekend, and I see a lot of you guys making contact with the serve up here. But if you're going to hit the serve low and really push your opponent around from side to side, you've got to make contact a little bit lower. Chip makes contact just below his knee. So you want to be able to hit the ball so it's parallel with the floor and carries the short line. So if you're hitting it up here like this, you can hit a ball that, that's going to bounce, hit the floor, and come way off the back wall. So you want to be able to try and stay low make contact really low. So, Chip, take us through a little bit about your, your mechanics on your serve. So what hand are you bouncing the ball with? Are you thinking about your shoulder rotation, anything like that? I've, know, I've seen a lot of people that drop it with their left, but I always feel there's no momentum with the ball. So I always like going with the momentum. So I drop it with my right, and I give the ball momentum. step I, I think is bring your shoulder back like you're hitting a golf ball. Just bring it back because then you want your core to drive through everything and that's where you're going to get all your power from. So if a lot of some players drop it and just go here and drive through, they're not do, they're getting all their power. So those players I guarantee are going to serve a lot of short balls over and over and over because they're going so low. But if they drop it higher, they're not going to serve as many shorts because it's just higher. But if you want that low ace power serve, you got to, you know, bring your shoulders back and then drive through with your core and your muscles. Okay, so basically you want to use the whole service box. So it's a couple feet wide for a reason. So you don't want to just start your stride from here and then end up hitting it here. You want to get as much momentum as, as you can going towards the front wall. So you want to go from line to line. So you're getting as much. So a lot of times it's two and a half or three steps to use that whole service box. How does Shanks hit that serve where it just hits about three inches high on the front wall and then clears this short line and then seems to just roll out flat on the side wall? What's he doing there with his hand? I mean, okay. So you think he's coming under the ball then? Uh -huh. Now, what about... When his serves go deeper, I feel he's doing the reverse. He's coming over the ball and trying to hook it into the wall. Um, now... Well, it, it looks to me sometimes like he's coming over the ball like this. But talk about not only the hop that you get when the ball hits the floor from coming over the ball or coming under it, but it also it hops off the front wall depending on how you, yeah. how you spin your, your wrist and your hand. Usually you straighten it out and it, it goes down the wall. But if you come over it, it's going to bounce and hop into the wall. So hopefully your opponent chases it towards the wall instead of being patient and letting it come off the wall. But when it's that low... There's really nothing you can do but try to get it back. <laughs> all right, well, let's, Chip, thank you. Let's have everybody take a turn hitting this power serve, and let's all try and hit the power serve down the left with our right hand. Is anybody here left-handed? 
Okay, so the left hander, you're gonna hit your serve with your left hand. Everybody else is gonna hit you lefty? Okay, good. Why don't you come in here and go first? So we wanna stand, are you gonna try and hit this serve down the left? Okay, good. Okay, that was good. That was nice, uh, nice technique. What, I, what I'd like to see you do, try one more. Try and, I saw that your hand was like this when you made contact. Try and cup your hand a little bit more so your, hand, your fingers stay together a little bit longer. Good. Now, the, the longer you're able to cup your hand, the, more, the longer the ball is going to stay on your hand and the more control you're going to have. That not only is true on the serve, but also during every shot during the rally. So good. Let's have uh, next guy in line go. Good. That time, you didn't get quite low enough and you had to end up lifting your arm like this. You want to be able to swing and keep your elbow parallel with the floor. but it's real simple if you, just, if, you, if you move it over just a little bit it'll go that way and it won't be a screen that was excellent that was an excellent serve and that would have double bounced before the back wall that was a very good serve nice so you want to remember what you did there and try and repeat that every time good job okay want to get the accuracy down before you get the power. Okay. Pretty good serve. It's alright. Let's try one more. See how fast you got there? And the ball's still here? Just be real patient on your hand here. Let's try and keep this arm a little bit more bent and then snap into it instead of straightening it out back here. Okay, good. That'll give you something to think about. Good job. Next guy. Try and drop this one with your right hand and try and get your momentum going into it. Okay. Now, when you go home and practice, think about instead of taking that one big stride like this, try and take one, two, three, because when your legs get this far apart, you've lost a lot of control and a lot of power because what you're doing is you're just here, and then from here, all you can use is your upper body. You're not able to really turn your core. Right, that's good. Right, so happy Gilmore. <laughs> Good power. You try and land this one a little bit closer to the short line. So you're aiming just beyond the short line. It's perfect. Yeah, it's very good. And you want to remember, this is going to be your first serve, so you can take a chance because if it's short, you're still going to have a second serve. You don't want to serve this for your second serve because then the tendency is going to be to hit it, overcompensate, and hit it too far over the line. Then you're going to give your opponent a big setup. Okay. That was nice. That was nice form. Really nice. Wow, excellent, excellent. And now, another good thing about serving to the left if you're right-handed is that the next shot's gonna come back to your right because they're gonna be hitting with their left. It's almost impossible to take the ball with your left and hit it back down the left. So when you serve with your right hand, now you wanna stay in this area here because the ball's gonna come off the wall at this angle that it's gonna come right back to your right. Okay, so you don't wanna serve 
and then go back to here because the ball is going to be on this side of the court. So you want to anticipate the angle that it comes in and cut that in half, and then you're right here. Okay, good. Okay, try and bounce this one with your right hand and just try and get everything going towards the front wall. That's a good serve. Very good serve. Excellent. Okay, good. Let's have uh, Mike come in here. Mike, that looked really good. Excellent. Let the ball drop really nicely. That was very good. Okay. A little bit of a miss hit there. Good. Okay, that was kind of like an overhand swing. You want to try and swing more sidearm. So try and keep that elbow more parallel with the floor like this. Instead of here, you want to be more here. Okay, it's a little bit awkward at first. That's okay. You just go home and even to go in the mirror and just swing here like this instead of this. Okay, good. Good. That was good. Nice power. Good job. All right, good. nice. If you're trying to hit a reverse, if you're trying to come over the ball, you want to keep the ball in your hand as long as possible. That'll give you a lot more reverse on it. So you actually want to swing more at like 70 or 80 percent because you will put a lot more reverse on it. It's like if you're throwing a curveball in baseball, you're not going to throw it 100 miles per hour. Oh, wow, that was sweet. That was really nice. Good. Has everybody gone? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay.
All right, good job, guys. So to recap the serve, what you want to think about is the objective of the serve, which is to get either an ace or an unreturned serve or an easy setup. So if you're not getting one of those things, you should be thinking about varying your serve. And obviously, there's a lot of different serves that you can hit. We, we're not going to get into all of them right now. Oh, OK. Here you go. So your goal on the power serve is just to barely clear this short line okay, and force your opponent to hit a shot from either down below their knee or from the back court without the ball coming off the back wall. And then you want to look for the first strike on the next shot. Because once you get into a rally, the longer the rally goes, the better the chance that anyone can win the rally. But if you're aggressive, the server can win a lot of one, two, or three shot rallies. So you want to be looking to attack that return of serve. Okay. Yeah. Good. That was good. It's, it's very hard when you're not warmed up, so you're just trying to kind of get a little bit of a feel for it. Okay, nice. Good serve. That's more of a Z serve. All right, good. So the second shot we're going to talk about is what I'd consider also to be the most important shot in handball, which is the return of serve. So the two most important shots are the serve and the return of serve, because if you can't do either of them, it's going to be very difficult to win matches. So we're going to talk a little bit to Abraham here about the return of serve. Now, I'm just going to kind of give a little bit of an overview, and then Abe can get into it. But basically, when you're returning serve, you're going to want to be right here in the middle of the court. Your goal as the returner of serve is to not give, your, not give the server an offensive opportunity. So if that means trying to get the ball up to the ceiling, hitting some kind of shot that wraps around the walls, or even just sort of floating a ball up off the front wall and maybe side wall that pushes them back into this deep court, then you've done your job. Now, if your opponent gives you a huge setup off the serve and it's coming way up the back wall, then you can try and be offensive and, you know, try and shoot it for a kill. But otherwise, you know, if you're back in these corners, your goal is just to try and not give them an opportunity where they're going to have a shot in this area here, where they're going to have a big advantage and an opportunity to end the rally because you're going to be stuck back there. So the goal is you want to force them out of the front court and you want to then take over the front court. So you want to reverse where they are and you are. So you want to go from back here to here and put them behind you. And then that increases your chances of winning the rally. Because you're not going to win a lot of rallies if you're stuck back there giving them a shot up here and then they can just pretty much do whatever they want. So Abe, what are you thinking about when you're facing a really good server, you know, someone like Shanks or, or Nadi Alvarado um, or Luis Moreno, and you're back here and your objective is to not give them a setup. So. Um, are you thinking about, you know, does it depend on the serve or does it depend on, you know, how the ball comes off the sidewall or the floor? Yeah, it all depends, guys, on who you're playing and what kind of serve they're, they're giving you. If someone's giving you a power serve down the left, um, you want to do your best to angle a ball. Well, I like to angle it front wall, deep side, so that way it forces them to run back for the ball. Or if you can pop it up to the ceiling, that's good, too. The only thing about that is if you pop it too hard, it's going to be a back wall setup. So you really have to control your fist. You know, hit it nice and soft, get the good stroke, and make it bounce and kind of soft so it doesn't come off the back wall. But my favorite shot is if it's hit slow enough that I can get a good swing on it, front wall, deep side wall, so it pushes them back for a pass shot. Okay? But if they hit a bad serve and it wraps around so it bounces, sounds like it is off the back wall, that's when you want to take a shot comfortable or just turn it right over you got a lot of options turn it right over to the left or hit a wraparound whichever you feel more comfortable but it all varies on how you're feeling and what your opponent is serving you so a brought up a, a good shot that comes up a lot particularly when people are power serving it's called that revolving door shot that bounces it hits the floor then the left side wall then comes around the back wall so what are you thinking about there Abe? because I see a lot of people not really getting in a good position to hit that shot are you thinking about clearing your hips first so that you're actually able to get yourself through that shot? Or is it more just kind of following the ball around? I, I've heard some people say it's like you're taking a picture of the ball. And if you're taking a picture of something and the ball is here, then look at my feet. They keep going with the ball. And then by the time you're ready to hit, now you're in position. Because what happens a lot on that shot is the ball is coming around and the feet don't move and then people just are hitting like this. So, Abe, I mean, what, is that something that you're able to practice or are you just thinking about that when you're 
in matches. A little bit, but just like every shot, guys, you guys got to keep your feet moving. So something that wraps around, like, like he just said, you guys want to stay light and just move your feet. So the ball's coming. You don't want to just plant like you just said. You try to arm hit it. You want to keep your feet going. And I like to wait for the ball as much as I can to get in front of me right out here. Because this is where all your options are. If you let the ball come in front of you, you have to hit a rack. You have to go for the kill or pull it down the left. It's all about moving your feet and letting the ball get centered. That's what I feel. Let it get centered in the front. Right. So what are you thinking about, Abe, as soon as they serve the ball? I mean, are you... Are you reacting to their serve? Are you going to split step? Are you, do you anticipate? Are you guessing what side they're going to serve to? I mean, what's your initial reaction just as they're bouncing the ball and hitting, making contact? Um, it depends on who you're playing. Once again, if you're playing someone that has a really good serve, like you said, Sean Lenny, Charlie Shanks, Chip, um, it's really hard because they have they disguise their serves really well. They could go left or right from the same position. So you want to watch really closely, watch their hand and their feet. That'll tell you. A lot of players, when they go down the right, they'll step in that direction. So that should give you a hint. They're probably going that way, okay? Unless they do something with their wrist and they flip it over, then they'll, they'll fool you. But you want to look at uh, the people's feet. If they go like this, they're going right. If it goes straight forward, they're probably pulling the ball down to the left, okay? So you want to keep an eye on the feet and the hands, where their hands are going. And that's basically going to give you the best idea of where they're going. And if you can catch, catch, get a little, um, what do you call it? I don't know. But if you could just catch a catch a little sign, like some ticks that they do, like when they go left, maybe they'll, you know, a little, yeah, a little tell. Sorry, stumble there. But if you guys figure it out, then you can start anticipating. Okay, he's been going left every time he does this. So you just start leaning and leaning and turn your hips. And maybe you're here, and then right when they start their motion, you kind of do a little turn, and then you're ready. You just stand sideways, face this wall, so you're in better position when they hit the shot or the serve. So I think it, it's a few steps. Number one, you have to be light on your feet. You have to be in the ready position. And then you want to try and pick up any tells, like Abe said, that they might be going to the right or left, because that's going to make it a lot easier to hit a good return when you're already there, as opposed to when you're scrambling, just trying to get in position. And then you want to think about what shot can take them out of the front court, whether it's a high front wall, side wall shot, or a hard front wall, side wall, maybe hitting to the ceiling. Sometimes you can hit you know, a three wall shot that wraps around all the walls. But really, it doesn't have to be that sophisticated. It, all it has to be is, how can I move them out of this front court area so I can move then into that front court area? Okay, so, you know, a lot of matches are lost because, you know, either players can't return the serve or they set up the return every time. So you have to figure out a way, you know, to move them out so then you can move in because the longer the rally goes, the better the chance the returner has. The, re the returner's not going to win a lot of three-shot rallies, obviously, because the server's going to be hitting that third shot, and usually they're going to put it away, okay? So now um, let's play some doubles points, and let's work on our serves and our returns, okay? So if you're, obviously it's a little bit different than singles, but, you know, think about when the serve comes to you, how you can get that out of the backcourt and put them back into the backcourt. So let's take the first two right here, and we'll have them play against the, the set third and fourth, and we'll just keep rotating that way. Okay. So let's actually have uh, let's actually have everybody actually just sit on the bleachers, and we'll just keep kind of rotating because it's going to be too much. The ball is going to be hitting everybody. I I can just see it already. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a good question too. Let's just have everybody um, in the bleachers, right here. And then, uh, no, because is there a court? Okay. All right, Abe. So just like bring two in each time, and we'll just keep rotating. Or Chip, you can do it. Whatever. Okay. Ready, guys? Go ahead. Yeah. Played out. Played out. Yeah. Short. Oh my. No, no, keep going. We're ke we can get this. All right, that was a pretty good shot, Mike. Very nice. Now let's alternate. Let's have this gentleman serve. Good.
All right, now, Mike, you hit a pretty decent return there, but then you just stood right here. Okay, so instead of standing here, you need to move up here. Okay, because if he makes that shot, all, even if he hits it only a foot high, you're stuck back here and you have no chance to get it. So when you hit that, you have to be moving back up here. Okay? All right, good. Let's get on two new t a new team to return. Let's have two new players to return here. You two guys are great right here. So what we're going to do is after you return, you're going to go in and serve, and then you'll come out. Okay, go ahead. All right, now, that was a good example. First of all, you started off over here. I'm not so sure why you're here, okay? So you guys should be like this. The left side player is here, the right side player is right here. And you never want to be returning serve like this. You're always going to be facing the front wall like this. So you, you're right here, facing the front wall, go ahead, and then you're also here. You want to be here like this, okay? So when the ball hits this side wall, and it comes to the middle of the court, generally that's going to be the left side player because they can take that with their right hand. Your partner here had to take that with his left. So the left side player should be taking that because your right hand is your strong hand. Okay, good. Let's try it again. Short. Second serve. Good serve. Excellent. Now let's rotate. You guys are out. You guys are serving. Let's have two more returning here. Okay, go ahead. Move up, move up. All right, that was a pretty good return. Excellent. You got it high and forced him back here. But remember, after you hit that return, you should be moving up here. Okay, good. Let's let your partner serve this one. All right, let's pretend that didn't happen. Try it again. All right. Good try there. All right, good. You guys are serving now. Okay, good. You guys, whoever just served is out. She's going to serve this one now. Good serve. Excellent serve. Okay, good. Rotate. We need two new players in here now. Who hasn't played yet? Has everyone had a chance to play points yet? I think so. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Short. All right, good. Now let's have everybody step outside. We're going to play uh, a little game we're going to organize. Okay. Now, guys, we're going to keep the same teams that we just played with in there. We're going to play king of the court. So if you're serving and you win the point, you stay in. Okay? If you lose the point, you're out of the court. Okay? First team to win seven points wins the game. Okay? And if you serve and win the point, your partner then has to serve the next point. So you'll keep alternating. So... Let's have you guys are first serving. Um, you guys are the first team receiving. Whoever your partners were. Okay. Same partners. Go ahead. So first team to win seven points is a server.
if you, if you want to, I was going to interview some of these kids and say, who's your favorite pro and get them on camera, you know? <laughs>